All right, we're going to start with the nation. CBN UK's 1,000 Naira, 500 Naira old notes after Buhari's rebuke. APC to decide zoning of National Assembly offices after elections. Lagos Airport's runway shot for repairs. ADP and NPP, other six endorse Olu, um, Samuelu. Rainstorm destroys 100 houses in Ondo. Why jam rescheduled mock UTME? Appeal court reserves judgment in a delicate suit. And high energy costs affecting manufacturing, says MEN. Okay, which story? Do you want me to start? Or Please. Do you want me? So I have the major, major headline. headline. <laughs> it says CBN okays 1,500 old notes after Buhari's rebuke. Hmm. So the CBN oh, yesterday <laughs> directed banks to comply with the Supreme Court judgment um, March 3rd on the validity of old Naira notes. So the, the, the nation says the instruction came hours after the president had rebuked the CBN governor and the attorney general of the federation. I just need, we know all this back and forth, but I just really need to read to you guys what the presidency mm -hmm. says. Tell hmm. us, tell us. The presidency absolves Buhari of blame. Oh. <laughs> Reacting to the, all our accusations, they said that since the president was sworn into office in 2015, he has never directed anybody to defy court orders in the strong belief that we can practice democracy without the rule of law and and the commitment of his administration to the, this principle has not changed. And they said the president is not a micromanager and will not therefore stop the attorney general or the CBN gov governor from performing the details of their duties in accordance with the law. Mm. So anyways, that's all the back and forth. We still have stories of people, NLC, you know, had already been threatening to ask um, workers to stay at home. Many people talking about the um, sufferings that they have had under this policy that just, and the silence from CBN, from the president, from wherever. But thankfully, now it means that, um, okay, the CBN also has now directed all the banks now Immediately. to pay this, yeah, to pay out and also receive. And we know that many of the governors had already gone ahead of, you know, the CBN directive anyway. So hopefully today we would see that, um, Movements of so cash the back and forth. of this story you just gave us what? is that the president said, I come, I come, I did not send anybody to disobey. Uh -huh. so, anyways, so I was going to take the <laughs> APC story because we've been talking, that there have been a lot of uh, issues or speculations about the distribution of offices, especially when the new administration works, comes in. So there was a meeting yesterday where uh, the president-elect specifically said that he had no um, candidate in mind for the 10th National Assembly leadership, um, that they were going to wait for the governorship and the House of Assembly elections this weekend first before um, they start. He was represented by his vice president-elect, um, Senator Shetima, and uh, where they had said they had to discuss the distribution of leadership offices in the Senate and the House of Representatives to avert a repeat of what happened back in 2015, senior, where the party lost control of the chambers despite having a majority seat in both houses. So there's going to be a meeting. Many people are speculating on how they should distribute it because we need to ensure there's equity. We don't want people thinking that only one side of, 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 of certain people, groups, have uh, power. The first, second, third, and fourth men should be distributed across um, the ethnic backgrounds. Okay, so the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria yesterday said that the temporary closure of the Lagos International Airports for maintenance will not affect flights at the aerodrome. Uh, this was uh, the spokesperson of the authority and acting general manager of public affairs, Mrs. Faithful Hope Ibaze. And um, he, she was saying that um, it's going to be closed for the next eight weeks. However, the alternate runway will remain open for full flight operations. And they're just requesting uh, understanding and cooperation of all stakeholders towards achieving this very important um, objective and one of the reasons they do this from time to time is just to ensure that uh, there's a safety and efficiency of flights we know that fan um, mm. a few weeks a few months they'll just you know <laughs> cordon some sections off from the international airport right. and do their repair so that we have safety in our flights uh, our flights needs they need to repair those mm. routes yeah. mm. rainstorm um mm. destroys a hundred houses in ondo state sadly people of ilara moki ifedori local government area of ondo state have had to sleep about 200 of them plus have had to sleep outside because there was unprecedented rainstorm that destroyed about a hundred houses and 
um, the Oba of Ilaramoki, Oba Biodum, Adefeinti, called for urgent assistance from the state government, saying they understand that the state government has a lot of things to do, but they would appeal that they come and help out because some houses were beyond repair, and the ones that they could repair, they're already working on them. Good news, though, the minister, the commissioner mm -hmm. for energy, mines, and natural resources, Rasak, Obey said the damages caused by that they um, they have come to, he came to visit the place and see for himself so see for himself so that he can um, ascertain the level of damage and how the government will be able to help. So his message is that we will respond to the crisis and our heart goes out to all of them that are having to <coughs> suffer based on the rainstorm. The punch. Emir Fili finally bows to pressure, says old Arnold's legal tender. Tinubu has no preferred candidates for National Assembly leadership, says Shatima. I wasn't part of the search for kidney donor, says Ekwe Mado's wife. FG shuts Lagos Airport runway, divert international flights. Nigerians to pay a thousand naira NIN fee for passports. And federal government probes theft in $1.1 billion oil well. Okay, which story are we taking here? Nigerians applying for passports will be charged a thousand naira in Nigeria for verification of their national identification um, number. According to the Commission, the fee is to improve the quality of service, accuracy and speed of passport services through the timely verification of NIN. Um, it, says, it also says that NIN verification fee would be charged for each Nigerian passport application for this service. Um, so it's 1,000 Naira for Nigerians and then it's $5 for those in African countries. And then outside Nigeria and the African countries is $15. Uh, $15. So it just says that it will significantly improve the speed of passport issuance, reissuance, blah, blah, blah. And I've looked at it. Who is getting the money? Good. So my own is, I would like to know exactly what they mean by it would improve the issuance, the speed. Mm. Where is that money going to? What machinery is it being put into to help? With the speed you know, and because the we don't end up so. always down. There's so always they're working issue. to um, add, they're working in conjunction with NIM, uh, NIMC, of course, that's the Nigerian Immigration Service. This is something that they are collaborating yeah. on. All right, so um, Beatrice, um, the query models, why they've started trial at the um, Old Bailey in London, where she was, she denied the allegation um, that um, she actually, she said, um, she denied the allegation that she actually went to search for donor. She said, no, that didn't happen. Um, she's been serving, serving trial alongside her husband and daughter and, and the medical doctor, Mr. Dr. Obina Obeta. Um, she said she was false, falsely presented as Sonia's, the, the, the claim was that the young man was falsely presented as Sonia's cousin in a field bill to persuade the doctors to carry out an 80,000 um, pound private procedure. But she too, according to her, she said that she was never involved in the search for the organ, organ donor and, and, and it was never her own decision to make. We'll probably, so I'm not, saying, I'm not saying she's trying to say it was somebody else, but according to her personal no, even, even the former <laughs> senator was saying that um, he's not the one that actively looked. I think yeah. he was brought on by the doctor. doctor. He was not the one that looked for the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what it's being said here. But the trial has started and we'll keep monitoring and hopefully the um, justice will be served at the end of the day. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So we're going to um, continue with... Daily Sun, are we taking the stories? No, 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 I wanted to take, take it again, punch. punch. punch right? Yeah, so some commercial bus drivers on Monday staged a protest uh, following the alleged killing of one of their colleagues by members of the State Task Force on Street Trading and Illegal Motor Parks set up by the state government in River State. So uh, there was a protest that happened just uh, after a taxi driver was being accosted by the tax force officials and they started having an altercation. The tax force officials beat, allegedly beat him to a pulp and the you know, passerbys and other drivers had to quickly rush him to the hospital to try and rescue him. But he died in the hospital. So they were upset. They came out on the streets and the protest was ongoing. And they are protesting, saying that um, they want the government to take out all those tax um, officers, uh, tax force officials from the roads that they are, you know, causing a lot of, you know, mayhem on the roads. They are charging them so much that normally the government has, you know, given them that um, tickets are for a taxi uh, driver when you get into the state you pay about three hundred thousand naira a year or four hundred thousand naira, and you know. 
okay, 300 naira for small vehicles and 400 naira, that's the daily pay that they do. Yeah. But they say they see a lot of tax force officials, somebody who just wear apron and come and be, you know, collecting money from them. So they want the government to step in and yes, take out this. Uh, the police has also responded saying that they have arrested the tax um, official that beat up this driver to death. Um, you know, investigations are ongoing on that one. I need to take this story from the punch. Um, federal government probes oil theft um, of $1.1 billion. Um, this oil, oil well was, is owned by um, the billionaire businessman Tony Lumilu the, by Hairs Holding and they've discovered that's in connivance with the owners of the land around the place and members of the community and staff that work within this organization, they created a refinery mm -hmm. that with pipelines laid across the land to the refinery that is processing crude oil illegally. With the people. With the people. With the people. People that work within the organization, they said 47% of the paid. oil, like 47%, <laughs> the, the money, because the money had clumping last yes, year, but now did. there's clear proof of the Who fact is doing that it? the villagers, community, because the large um, mass land that they used to um, pipe, they said they've never seen anything. The NSC said that it is, they, I must confess that this is the first time we're witnessing a well-fabricated illegal refinery with hmm. such wide range of pipelines laid across the area. You will see, if you see how big the land is, you can imagine how the unscrupulous people must have continued despite the fights hmm. they are having. As in, this is so sad. First of all, there will be lots of So facts. sad. Because a lot Why? of foreigners are living because of this kind of things. The locals are conniving with staff to do it. And now this is a Nigerian person who has bought back this um, oil, oil well, and now we're still making that person lose money. How about the people yes. that are paid to do the job? Exactly. Exactly. And they're conniving. And they're conniving with uh, heads to roll. We are, we are, we are I'm part telling, of this that's cycle. It. Let me just move on to Daily Sun. I don't want to say, but, but this is who we are. We now have children that have schooled abroad, mm -hmm. and they'll be doing there. Or oh, they will go to church and be testifying. Yes. yes. So God has done it. Meanwhile, they are armed robbers. And Daily things. Sun. CBN directs banks to dispense all 200, 500. In fact, I need to screen grab this and show my <laughs> onion seller. <laughs> my <flat laughs> seller. I think so. They might I have be. no preferred <laughs> candidates. We took that story already. Buhari never asked Malami. He may fail to the Subway Supreme Court order, says presidency. <laughs> Senate resumes plenary March 21st. <laughs> Seven political parties endorse Sanwo Lu for second term. <coughs> Why I insist Chinumbu didn't win presidential policies will be. Polls jam shifts 2023 UTME mock exam. Health hazard FG disables solar panel batteries in Abuja school. And Oshun Gubai appeal court reserves judgment in a delicate suit. Okay, which story? Okay, so uh, this okay. story, um, they say the federal government has disabled batteries of solar panels installed at a junior secondary school, GUI. An airport road in the FCT over health hazards. So the directive was given by the Environmental Health Council of Nigeria by the Minister of Environment, his name Mohammed Abdullahi, following hazardous emission of the substance from the solar batteries. So it's just you know different people spoke. Some people said it looked like the battery was um, swollen um, because of it had. Um, preserved or conserved energy but had not emitted, you know, had not used the energy and so the batteries had become swollen. Different reasons and they said that the emissions coming out of that would have caused um, um, health hazards to the students and, you know, we had some health people too who were talking of how it would affect diseases of the lung, confusion, brain damage and the rest. So I understand and it says there were 48 panels that were installed in the school. So I get it, it's a very important conversation too know how these things can affect us health-wise but i'm just wondering why it's in the paper i was i wanted to find out if it was something that bigger than this <laughs> if that there was a story behind yes. that <laughs> yes there there isn't any story because even at homes when you find that your batteries are emitting um gas you know toxic gases yeah. you will take it out but why did it make the news was there something else that happened that we'll not, that that the, person, in plain sight. the reporter wanted it to get <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but i know that but but i know that was important to name names of some uh, ministers and stuff in this all right let's take another story in daily let stand. me take the governor um lagos state getting endorsed by nine political parties so um app adp apm nrm ypp nnpp zlp and prp they have all come together to say that they are endorsing 
um, Babajide Songulu, governor of Lagos State, to have a, a second term. They said that it makes a lot of sense with the president-elect being Ashiwa Jubola Metinubu to have continuity within Lagos State. They also mentioned that they've seen a lot of achievement of his themes project and that a vote for Songulu, according to them, would be an endorsement for <coughs> continuity and greater development for Lagos State. They also mentioned that um, they are... They are, they are making this support because they wish to inform all their own supporters in Lagos State that by March 18, they should vote for um, Governor Babajide Songulu. So, okay. do you have a call? Yeah, story? Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM has shifted the 2023 Mock Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTMEA, earlier fixed for Thursday, March 16th to Thursday, March 30th now. Uh, you know that uh, the uh, UTME Mock is an examination that is um, like um, a preparation exam before the main JAM exams, and it was introduced in 2016 just to help students get ready for the main exams. Uh, they said um, that 100 candidates successfully registered for this particular one. And one of the reasons they had to move it was when the gubernatorial uh, elections was moved you know, to 18th. And that affected you know, the whole thing. And that's why they are moving it. Also, that they are going to uh, use a lot of groundbreaking innovations this time around to address all the infractions that they've been having and center failures. So one of the things they're going to be doing, if your exams do not start for up to one hour, like it starts late in up to one hour, then they are going to cancel, reschedule the examination, send you back your another center for you to go and get ready for the exams. No exams, your examination session will start after one hour late. That's a way to ensure right. that they are not into Nobody is giving practices. Yes. information. Yeah. yeah. Vanguard, CBN tells banks, we talked about that already, Spanish two is not taken. Uh, late uh, tribute, late Afegba, a quintessential legislature, says Senator Tinumbu. Alleged organ harvest, Mrs. Ikurimado denies helping to find donor. Train bus crash, toxicology test reveals traces of drugs in driver's blood and urine. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not God's will to accept rigged elections, says OB. 10th National Assembly, no preferred candidate, says Tinubu. And cash crunch, e payment platforms record mixed performance. So, Senator Oluremi Tinumbu, that's the wife of the president elect, has expressed sadness over the death of the first elected female Senator Franca Afegua, saying her contributions to Nigeria and the women folk will never be forgotten. According to her, she has from, the woman was from being a widely celebrated beautician to breaking the glass ceiling and showing Nigerian women that they can participate in politics <coughs> and make meaningful contributions and impact. Senator Afegua was a trailblazer who paved the way for others, including me. Quote, end of quote. All right, so I will take the story, the um, crash, the train bus crash. So the driver of that, um, the bus driver, 44-year-old Oluwa Shio Osibajo, um, was blamed for the accident. Uh, they said they did a, a toxicology uh, test <clears throat> immediately, you know, as part of investigation and in his urine and blood found that he had taken, he had drugs in his system. Mm. Um, they also said that um, he had been taken to the Federal Medical Center, Ibutemata, for treatment. And they said that he, on Friday, he had refused to eat. So they just thought it was a psychological effect of what had happened. But that Saturday, he was complaining of excruciating pain. And um, he was then rushed, I, I think he was then, you know, rushed like to the theater and they found out that he had internal bleeding. Mm. And so he's been, um, he's been operated on mm. and he's in ICU. He hasn't um, come to consciousness since right. the time, but wow. yes. He's in coma he right now. Was, okay. He had drugs in his system. Wow. We said this all the yeah, time. Drugs, a lot of those drivers use drugs. Yeah, early in the morning. We didn't expect that from yeah. a driver driving such a bus, though. Yeah. Um, okay. the, Senate, the, Senate, um, the Senate clerk on Tuesday, his name is um, Ms., um, Senate, uh, Mr. Chinedu Akabwezi, has announced to all our senators that they are going to resume plenary. It was moved because of the elections, but on the 21st of March, Tuesday, it is expected that all senators should resume. Tuesday, by 10 a.m. prompt, please get back to work. Elections will be over by then. <laughs> okay, let's see. Final paper. I'm not sure there's any story we've not taken here. Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story. Appeal Court reserves judgment on Oshun governorship appeal. <coughs> national Assembly Principal Offices, Tinubu APC National Working Committee to decide on zoning national chairman. 
INEC stalls Labour Party protests, receives opposition parties' legal team. Uh, candidates of the Z, ZLP, YPP, others declare for Solomonlu and Ogun. Traditional ruler buried according to Islamic uh, injunction. Any story there that is okay? Mm. I think that's all we can take. Thank you.